for an artist, the art supply store is a virtual candy store. <laughs> Did I say candy store? I meant money-sucking vampires that <laughs> to bankruptcy until you can't afford to <laughs> There's so much cool stuff it could make your head spin. But what should you be spending your hard-earned bucks on? Well, stick around. Because in this video, I'm going to share with you four of my favorite tools that you need in your studio that aren't technically art supplies. Hi, my name is James Owens, and on this channel, I share with you the techniques, tips, hacks, and history that I've learned over 35 years to help you become a better artist. There are a lot of videos out there recommending different art supplies. Different kinds of colored pencils, different kinds of paints, different kinds of magic markers. But in this video, I'm going to share with you four of my top tools that aren't technically art supplies. Oh, and stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to share with you some of my top tool honorable mentions. Now, I like to make videos to help you save money in the very expensive world of art supplies. But this is one item I want you to spend top dollar on. <laughs> Good paint can be very expensive, and one of the worst feelings in the world is throwing away a tube of paint knowing there's still good paint down in the bottom. So, how do we get that liquid cash out of those very expensive tubes? Well, fortunately, someone's designed a tool to solve that problem. They're called tube rollers. Now, technically, these aren't designed specifically just for the artist. These can be used on anything that comes in a tube, different kinds of creams, toothpaste, you name it. But for the artist, these are a must-have tool for the studio. Now, they make these in different styles, and believe me, I've tried a bunch of them, including these. They're like a little plastic key that you roll up on the end of your tube of paint. Tried them. Hated them. Now, the drawback on these is that you kind of need to have one for each of your tubes of paint. And they're a pain in the butt to put on and take off and I, I had a pack of about a dozen of these around the studio, and I was constantly just running into these. They were all over the place. They were hard to keep track of. And I found that, frankly, they just didn't work as good as some of the other options that I found out there. The style I've found to work best is like a vise with a crank on the side. You simply insert the tube, close the jaws over the end of the tube, and turn the crank. This will crimp the tube and push all the leftover paint to the front. Now there are a number of different companies out there making these at all different price points and I found the majority of them to be junk. Stay away from the plastic ones or the ones made out of aluminum. They don't have the strength to grip the tube and squeeze the paint to the end. The teeth just spin no matter how hard you squeeze. I've even taken the aluminum ones out into the garage and tried to beef them up and make them grip better. No go. But I found one that works like a dream. The Big Squeeze brand of these tube rollers is the best I've ever found. They're made in America and they've got a lifetime guarantee. They grip the tube well and they do exactly what they say they'll do. Now, I'm not paid by this company to say these things about this. I just think that this is one of the best tools that I've ever found and well worth having in your studio. Now, these are at the top of the price range. At the time of this recording, they're about 35 bucks, but well worth every penny. Now this second tool is so handy, I've had mine for decades. Really, Jim? Could you shed some light on that? This is called a mud light. Why it's called a mud light, I have no clue. But it's as handy as a shirt with a pocket on it. Now, as I said, I've had this for decades and I use it for everything from lighting my easel, lighting my sculpture stand, shooting these videos, to uh, lighting live models or still lifes that I want to shoot reference of. It comes with a standard socket, so you can put any kind of bulb you want in this, including a color corrected bulb if need be. It can adjust up to seven feet tall and comes with an eight foot cord, which is great. I also like this wood handle, which allows you to adjust it if it starts to get warm. Now you could just use the clip-on cheapo hardware store shrouds with any kind of bulb you want in it, and I do use those from time to time. But with this tripod and this ability to set this up anywhere makes this baby an invaluable tool for your studio. 
Number three on my list of top tools is floating wall shelves. Now, for years, I used to just lean my paintings up against the wall or against my desk, wherever I could find a free spot on the floor in the studio. But the problem with that is, is one, they can get dirty down there. Two, you can't really see your art to examine it well down there. The light's awful. And three, they can get stepped on and literally destroyed. Ask me how I know about that one. When I've done a piece, I like to do what I call living with it. Essentially, I put the art up where I can see it in the room in good light. After a day or two, your eye gets refreshed and you can better see the problems in the piece. I do this all the time and more times than not, I find ways to improve that piece. The cool thing is they're cheap and easy to install. I think you can get a three pack of these on Amazon for about 20 bucks. I'll put a link down below to help you find the items that I'm talking about in this video. Are you still using old butter tubs or paper plates for a palette? Or maybe you've got one of those giant artsy fartsy ones made out of fine wood with a fancy hole where you can stick your thumb. Or maybe you've got a big sheet of glass to mix your paint on. Believe me, over the years, I've tried them all, including those fancy pads of disposable palette paper. I've never once found a brand that could stand up to the paint and the solvent. And I don't know about you, but I got in this game to make art, not clean palettes all day. Well, say hello to my little friend. A humble box of freezer paper. That's right. You can get it at any grocery store. It resists all the oils and all the solvents. And its best feature, it's cheap. I actually hang the roll of this under my work area on my easel. When I need to, I just pull out a clean portion and cut off the used portion. Boom, I'm ready to rock. I use a couple of bull nose clips to hold it in place. Like I said, it's cheap and easy and gets you on your way painting quick. Hey, if you're getting value out of this video, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell and toss me a thumbs up on that like button. And now here's those top tool honorable mentions. First up, a simple pair of pliers. Now we all know how useful these are to have around the house. Well, doubly so in the studio. I use these for pulling nails out of old frames, or I also keep them on my tabaret next to my easel for dealing with difficult paint tube caps. Number two is the handy DIY brush rule slash mall stick. Now, I've done a complete video on this, so I'll put a link to that down below, but I never do a painting without this. Number three on my top tools honorable mentions is the humble pair of tweezers. I keep these on my tabaret next to my easel. They're great for extracting that inevitable stray hair that comes either from the brush or if you have a family member that doesn't shave. So there you have it. Four indispensable items and three honorable mentions for tools that you need in your studio that technically aren't even art supplies. Hey, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments if you have any non-art supplies that you use in your studio to make your life easier. Well, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you gained some insight and picked up some tips from this video. So until next time, go make something cool. Owen's out.